I'm Paolo. I'm the executive chef uh, Scout um, and W Italy in Singapore. Uh, from Italy, south of Italy, very small village where we grow our own vegetables. In home, my mom loves to cook, and that's where all the passion for cooking, for flavors, for natural ingredients came along. Hello, Tom. Hi, How are you, mate? Hi, Bill. How are you? How are you? How are you? Hi, sir. So, what's next? Sauce, right? Before we change this menu, we spent about three to four months, me and uh, Tom, uh, the sous chef, to find the right product, to find the right ingredients, to try to bring only the finest uh, ingredients that you can find around. Oh, well, hey, buddy. What have you got today? Mm, got this, what we got? Uh, Argentina standard one. Cool, nice. Perfect, beautiful. This is a uh, Argentina sirloin. Yep. We have two. Yep. Sweet, that's all for tonight, right? Yes. Max. We have a uh, Australia shirt. shirt. This is a shirt steak, our signature, four numbers. And then the tenderloin. Good, nice. I want to see that. That looks beautiful. Chef, this is our Indian mushroom. Nice. Perfect. The last one will be the harum tomato chef. Oh, nice. Smell that. Jordan, smell that. It's beautiful. Thank you, Vincent. Started at 15. That's where I actually get my first job or when I start to be in a restaurant. I start as uh, polishing glasses and uh, dishwashing. My chef put me in the kitchen after eight months. That was the first time when I actually stepped in the kitchen and started rolling meatballs. You're getting excited when you get the feeling of touching the ingredients, when you start making something that you feel is yours. And even if you do 10, 12 hours and then you go home, you're still proud. That feeling is still with me now and that's why we keep on going and uh, that's what pushed me to keep the boundaries and keep on going. So we'll prep in the tenderloin for tonight dinner. This is the Cher Wagyu. And then after this, we're gonna prep the Argentinian. We just keep it simple. We're just gonna trim, uh, remove all the fat and the muscles. So the meat is much more lean, much more tender. And we just prep it for, for tonight with salt and pepper. That's it. We don't use any oil or any butter or any other flavoring for, for our meat. We just wanna make sure that we keep the flavor as it is. Some place will marinate. That's the beauty of a skirt restaurant where we keep our product as it is, natural. All the flavor of the meat is actual, the natural meat and nothing else. My favorite cut is actually a ribeye. Ribeye has flavor and it has the right amount of fat compared to a tenderloin. A tenderloin is one of the most expensive. It's the leaner part, so there is, no, there is no fat. Some people like it but I just think that you need to have the nice natural balance of, um, of fat with your meat. The better the gal get fit, the better flavor you got. Here at Skirt, we have uh, different, different cuts, uh, different breeds, obviously. We wanna make sure that our guests have a different experience with us. We start with uh, our share skirt because they supply only for us. We also have a grain-fed U.S. meat. Normally when they would go for U.S. meat, they would always talk about uh, Wagyu. But we went a little bit outside the box and we went for a grain-fed. We went more natural, um, hormones-free. We have also a grass-fed Argentinian beef. Very uh, intense and strong flavor. And our Japanese Tojiki Wagyu, which is A5. Skirt is, uh, it's not your regular steakhouse. We are a modern grill with European flavors, European twist, a very boldest grill. We're always trying to, to be different. We want to use classic techniques to a modern way of plating and a modern way of approaching the flavors. Right, guys, so tonight is gonna be a special night. Let's make sure we set before six o'clock. Anything that we short, anything that we don't have, speak up now. Last night was busy, but it was good, okay? It was no issue. So let's make another night like last night, all right? It was good and have fun. Yes, yeah, chef. Yes, chef. Let's, uh, let's get ready, let's have a quick uh, bite and then we're good to go for service. Yes, yes chef. All right, thank you. So far we have 61 packs. 
First table at 6, last table at 8.45. 6.15, one table for two. She have nuts allergy. Last table is at 8.45, one table for two. My favorite part of the day is the service time. Well, I knew all the four egg yolk, four scallops, one rabbit, three steak. Yes, chef. One rabbit. Wait, oui, wait. Oui. So, Jordan, give me six ravioli, please. Tom, can I have one bread, please? Service. Chicken. Thank you. At six o'clock, you are just uh, in the kitchen with your own team, and there is a kind of isolated room where you forget all your problems, you forget all what you have outside, and you just solely focus on ingredients, on the foods, and, uh, and make sure that you're giving the best experience to the guest. Right, table five is the way, second course. One in Wagyu tenderloin, one tenderloin, one tomahawk, dry age, one broccoli, one mash, one mac and cheese, one black cabbage. Uh, Tom, can I have one octopus straight up, please? Buratina for 14 is gone, guys. We use a very particular grill to, to cook our meat. It's the famous Argentinian uh, Parilla grill. It's an opal flame grill, which is filled with charcoal and uh, apple wood. The reason why we're using this grill is because the meat is in contact with the, with the heat. It will get the flavor of the charcoal, get the smokiness of the apple wood. Been cooking for 17 years now. The team that I'm working with at the moment in the kitchen I think he's one of the greatest teams that I ever had. They're really open-minded and they're really pushing the boundaries until we achieve uh, whatever we want to achieve. Sometimes the long hours can be one of the points where some of the chefs or wherever is approaching to be a chef wants to quit or, or let it go. It definitely takes passion. You need to have love and respect of the, of the ingredients and, and the items that you use. And that's what we're trying to do here at Skirt. It's always trying to uh, give a full experience to the guests. And it's not just about feeding them or just put the food on the plates and, and send them out. The most rewarding part is the closing time. It's the 10 o'clock when the, all the guests leave in the restaurant with a smile in the face. You do a little debrief with the, with the chefs and you say, you know, the, the evening went well. We did uh, the 100, 120 covers. Uh, there was no problems. Thank you, Thank you for today. Thank you. Thank you, chef. Thank you, Dali. Jordan, Mr. Jordan. See you tomorrow. You, All right, good job today. Three minutes for a salad, nice. Good job. Thank you very much, have a good night. I personally believe that once a chef reach a point where he says, I know everything, I believe it's a time to take the jacket out and uh, hanging on the, on the wall. I'm still learning every single day and I'm learning from everybody or from my team or any feedback that the guests give us every day. I definitely see myself cooking more. It's something that really takes the stress out in, 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 some, in some way and so I don't, I don't see any plan of stopping and uh, I just want to keep on going, keep learning. Being a chef is always a learning journey. 